Good day, I'm Theodore Henry, and this is your JIS News for Thursday, February 9, 2023. Government will present its budget for the upcoming fiscal year next Tuesday, February 14, in the House of Representatives. Minister of Finance and the Public Service, Dr. Nigel Clark, will table the estimates of expenditure following the ceremonial opening of Parliament earlier in the day. During the ceremonial opening, Governor-General Sir Patrick Allen will deliver the throne speech outlining government's legislative agenda for the 2023-2024 parliamentary year. Unlike the openings in 2021 and 2022, which were curtailed due to the COVID-19 pandemic, this year's ceremony will see a return to the full slate of invitees. In addition to parliamentarians and their guests, state officials, custodes, mayors and representatives of the diplomatic corps will be invited. The march to Gordon House, led by the Prime Minister and Leader of the Opposition, will also return in the traditional manner. Leader of the House, Minister Edmund Bartlett, says the planning for this year's ceremony is seeking to recapture the grandeur that existed before the pandemic restricted face-to-face -face interactions. The governments of Jamaica and the Republic of Sierra Leone are working to strengthen diplomatic relations and agreements in the areas of tourism, culture and the creative industries. Minister of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade Senator Kamina Johnson-Smith says discussions have already started about a memorandum of understanding in respect of tourism. Jamaica welcomes the potential for collaboration, particularly in the fields of tourism and culture. Our inspiration and indeed our enthusiasm to deepen relations and to identify opportunities for collaboration are rooted in our centuries-old, deep-rooted people-to-people -people connections. The Foreign Affairs Minister says other areas of cooperation being examined include health, agriculture and human capital development. She was addressing Tuesday's official opening of the Honorary Consulate of the Republic of Sierra Leone to Jamaica at 16 Asquith Drive in Red Hills. Professor Rosalie Hamilton has been named the first honorary consul for the Republic of Sierra Leone to Jamaica. This is the country's first consulate being established in the Caribbean, and Sierra Leone's Minister of Tourism and Cultural Affairs, Dr. Memonatu Pratt, says it signals a deepening of the relationship and commitment to facilitating greater cooperation. Our coming here, um, in terms of the most important thing about the opening of our consulate, you know, is the fact that we want to make a point. We want to send a message to Jamaica that indeed we are ready. Diplomatic relations between the countries were first formally established on November 15, 1967. A series of celebratory events are being held from February 7 to 11 to commemorate the deepening of the partnership and the welcome and homecoming for delegates and members of the creative industries from Sierra Leone who have traveled to Jamaica to mark the occasion. Jamaica's proposal for February 17th to be declared Global Tourism Resilience Day is now official following the designation by the United Nations. Minister of Tourism Edmund Bartlett has welcomed the UN's decision, which follows months of high-level discussions and diplomatic engagements. He says it will help increase awareness and the actions of global tourism stakeholders towards boosting the industry's capacity to effectively handle and recover swiftly from major disruptions. The Caribbean, which is the most tourism-dependent region on Earth, are hugely impacted by weather events such as hurricanes uh, and then seismic events and, and, and even volcanic activity. So when these things happen, how do you respond? How do you respond quickly? How do you recover, recover fast and grow afterwards? That's what resilience is about. Minister Bartlett introduced the draft resolution designating Global Tourism Resilience Day at the UN General Assembly meeting in New York on Monday. Jamaica will host the historic first Global Tourism Resilience Conference from February 15 to 17 at the University of the West Indies Regional Headquarters in Kingston. Students and staff at Arden High School in St. Andrew will soon benefit from the establishment of a health and wellness centre. The centre is being built on premises owned by the school with permission from the Society of the Church of God in Jamaica at a cost of $60 million. It is expected to be completed within a year and is an initiative of the Arden Alumni Foundation. Education Minister Favor Williams has welcomed the center, which aims to support the physical and mental health and overall well-being of the school's students and staff. Her speech was delivered at the groundbreaking ceremony by Education Officer in the Ministry, Hazel Masters Williams. The holistic approach to student and staff well-being cannot be taken for granted. 
where human beings who from time to time need intervention to deal with physical and mental health issues. In addition, schools have an essential role to play in supporting students to make healthy lifestyle choices and understanding the effects of their choices on their health and well-being. The proposed two-story building will include a nurse's station, students and staff sick bays, washrooms, students' lounge, counseling rooms, and a multi-purpose roof terrace. The counseling rooms will allow our alumni to mentor students and teachers and teachers in an environment that is conducive to fostering well-being. The building will be surrounded by green spaces and gardens, which will provide a tranquil tranquil and peaceful environment for wellness and healing. The chairman of the Arden High Alumni Foundation says $15 million has so far been secured for the project. She's encouraging others to partner with the foundation. And finally, the Solas to Grand Street Parochial Roadway in Western Westmoreland is now undergoing major repairs through a $17.8 million road improvement contract. The National Works Agency, NWA, is undertaking the work through its Maintenance of Secondary Roads program. Community Relations Officer at the NWA's Western Region, Janel Ricketts, says the project targets approximately 700 meters off the roadway. It involves extensive drainage improvement works and the reshaping and asphalting of the targeted section of the roadway using asphaltic concrete. The project, which began in December 2022, is expected to be completed by the end of this month. In the meantime, the NWA is also undertaking a major flood mitigation project along the Bullstrode Main Road in western Westmoreland at a cost of $8 million. That road, located along the corridor leading from Tollgate to Grange Hill, has been plagued by persistent flooding. The works agency is creating a high embankment on which the road will be placed and is also installing additional drainage features, including culverts, V-drains and catch basins. The targeted sections of the roadway will be resurfaced using asphaltic concrete. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Theodore Henry. Thanks for watching.